Grab an eggshell, fill it with soil, and plant a seed. Place it on your windowsill, and now you've got a seedling that can be planted directly into your garden. Eggshells are full of nutrients too. Grab a sleeve for trading cards. Fold your seed packages in half and slide it inside. Put them in a duotang, and now you've got a super organized seed book. Grab a milk jug, draw the following lines. Cut it out, and now you have a shovel that is perfect for scooping soil into pots. Press a mini muffin tin into the soil, and now you have evenly spaced markings for planting your seedlings. I hope these easy garden hacks inspire you. Here's an easy garden hack using dollar store garbage cans. I'm cleaning up a neglected flower bed by first raking up any dead debris. Then I'm fluffing up the soil and removing any weeds. To create a sharp flower bed edge, I'm using a half moon edger to cut a nice straight line, then removing the turf parts. Next, I'm planting flowers by digging a hole, then planting the roots and covering with soil. For added protection, I'm now covering each flower with a dollar store garbage can. They are sized perfectly for new flowers and can protect your plants from wildlife and harsher weather. I love growing flowers. However, I don't always like to constantly worry about keeping them watered. Any waterproof container can be used. I'm setting a milk jug inside the tub, then marking the tub just above the jug level. Using a metal drill bit, I'm now drilling some drain holes on both sides of the tub where I marked. To waterproof the tub, I'm rolling out heavy gauge builder plastic. The plastic is being cut to fit inside the tub. I'm using duct tape to attach the plastic to the tub sides to hold it in place. I'm gathering the four corners and stapling them together. Next up is to create a screen which will separate the soil from the water. I'm cutting four cedar strips to create a square wood frame. Now I'm adding two more strips to fill in the sides making the frame completely flat. Some old window screen is being placed across the top of the frame, then roughly cut to size, then attached to the frame with screws. I'm drawing long slits into one side of each of the four milk jugs, then cutting the shape out with an X-Acto knife against a metal ruler. The milk jugs are being turned cut side down. These slits will absorb water. All four milk jugs are being positioned into a square shape, with each pouring spout running into a bottom end. Holding two milk jugs together, the jug openings are first being traced with a felt pen, then cut out with an X-Acto Blade. All the milk jugs are being attached to each other by pushing the pouring spouts into the bottoms through the cut holes. To create a water feeder tube, I'm tracing a plastic bottle lid on top of a milk jug, then cutting a hole with an X-Acto knife. Now I'm cutting the bottom of the plastic bottle right off. Next is inserting the pouring spout end into the milk jug. Using a drill bit, I'm drilling holes along the tops of the milk jugs so the plant roots will gravitate towards them once filled with water. Back to the planter, I'm adding about one inch of potting soil onto the bottom of the tub to create a base. Then the milk jug reservoir is being placed inside the tub. The feeder tube is being removed, then the screen is being placed on top so I can cut a feeder tube hole through the screen. Then I'm adding soil under and on top of the screen until it's deep enough to plant flowers. I'm filling the feeder tube with water, which is now filling up the reservoir, and watching the side drainage holes to ensure they are working. And there you have it, a totally self-watering flower planter that basically takes care of itself. Just check the feeding tube periodically and top with water every so often as needed. We gotta clear all of this out, so I got to work. Once I got all that done, I used a large rake to make sure it was level, and I moved the stepping stones. Once I get all of this clear, it's time to grab one 4x4x8 four by four by pressure treated board. And the reason I'm going pressure treated is because it's going to go into the ground and that way it won't rot out. I'm gonna cut this eight foot board into four pieces. Once I got all my four pieces, I'm gonna grab some cedar fence pickets, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut off just the dog ears on them. I'm gonna lay these out and put some deck screws. We're gonna make two exact copies of this, one for each of the long sides. Then it's time to put a second board. It's time to make the other ends. I'm gonna go 30 inches on those cedar boards, cut those, and again, I'm gonna need two for each side, so a total of four. I'm gonna go ahead and get these started, lining these up with two screws on each end. Once these are all in, we're gonna go ahead and also do a second board, and that way we have our right depth. Once all this is together, it's time to dig out where the posts are gonna go. So I'm gonna use a post hole digger and go in a couple of inches and get that nice and deep. I'm lucky the soil in my area is kinda nice to work with. I'm gonna use some cardboard. I just lay that down, put some soil on top. Once I get all this in, now it's time to go to the garden soil. That is what has all the organics and you can plant directly into. I'm gonna use a rake to keep spreading it out, break up any large clods that come. I took, then it's time to put all the flowers in. Then it's time to put the stepping stones back in place. And I was able to reuse some of the bark dust, but I'm gonna put some new stuff down also. I've got an area on the side of my house that is just ugly with an old hose. Take some handles and also 
the base for a planter and I'm gonna put these handles on the side. Go ahead and put both sides on and make sure you get them nice and tight. But we're gonna flip it over because we need to drill some drain holes. Once we got these holes drilled, turn it back over and we're gonna use some succulent potting soil. And then you can begin to go ahead and transplant your succulents over to this base. On the planter though, we need to drill a hole about halfway up and that's how we're gonna put the hose in. So we also wanna put some drain holes in the bottom of this planter. Now the last thing we gotta do is put some wood in there. That's gonna hold this lid up. Once you got it, make sure you do two on each side. Make sure you also get that garden hose through. Don't throw those milk jugs away. Take that cap and drill some holes in the top. Put some nice clear water in there and it's great for your plants. You can see how much water you have left and it gives you the perfect flow. Let's grab a lemon right out of the tree or off the ground. Cut it in half. You can use this after you take out the inside and we're gonna put some potting soil in there. Once you get it all filled up, put your starter in there and give it some water. Once you buried it up, it will decompose, giving it some nutrients. Perfect little starter. Now we're moving on to those plants out front. Go ahead and put some holes in there use a drill or a knife dig a hole stick that bottle inside all you need to do is have the cap showing. Once you get it buried up and packed in there, take the cap off, fill it with water. It's one of those slow waters, but it will get down deep inside the roots. Saves water, makes your plants look great. If you're trying to clean your tools, add a little baby oil to them first. Plant as usual, weed your garden, and they'll clean right off. Another tip is fertilizing plants that you can't reach. So grab a cardboard paper tube, place it into the plant, and sprinkle the fertilizer down the tube into the plant's root system. Do this and you'll save yourself a trip to the grocery store. After cutting up my green onion, celery, and lettuce, I placed the bottom ends into a container of clean water. I added four toothpicks to each of the celery and lettuce ends so they were suspended in water. I placed the food scrap containers in a warm area with lots of natural sunlight and I replaced the water every four to five days. After about four weeks, I had a whole new batch of green onion and before you know it, I'll have celery and lettuce too. The green onion was so flavorful and it was delicious on top of our homemade double stuffed potatoes. I had a very old and large flower pot. So I started with some Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color cement. I decided to add a gingham ribbon. Now these flower pots are really large and it takes a lot of soil sometimes to fill these up. Grab some pool noodles. Cut the pool noodles into small sections. Place all of these sections into the flower pot and it takes a little bit of arranging to get them into the flower pot the way you want them to look. You could stop here or I'm going to add a pizza pan to the top of the pool noodles. The water will be able to drain around the outside edge. I add some soil to the top of the pizza pan and then it's time to plant my flowers. I decided that I really didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on this project, so I used whatever things I had around the house already. And then to keep the soil from coming out of the sides, we used some landscape fabric and some of those pieces of wood to hold the fabric in place. And I used some old 4x4s left over from an old playset to make planter bots. So we salvaged what we could from the old garden and pressure washed the bricks and the patio stones. And I reclaimed the sand and pebbles from the old garden to level out the walking space between boxes. And then I added more of the reclaimed soil from the old garden, planted some seeds, planted some pretty flowers because you want your garden to look pretty. And of course you want to be able to eat out of your garden. So I added some herbs as well as some tomatoes and some peppers, cucumbers, and a few other things. Now I'm no master gardener, but I have learned a few things over the years. Eggshells, for instance, can add calcium back into your soil, which is particularly good for tomatoes. Just crunch up the shells and sow them into your soil. Another way to add additional nutrients back into your soil is ashes from wood burning logs. Now this will also raise the pH of your soil so you wouldn't want to put it around acid loving plants like azaleas and blueberries and strawberries but it's really great for tomatoes and a lot of the other plants in your garden as well as the hardwood trees in your yard. It's been a few weeks and the garden is starting to really look beautiful. Costa to our great plants. They're so easy to grow and divide if you want more. Most of them are deer, rabbit, and disease resistant. I have a lot of hosta at my house, all different varieties for sun and shade. I think the biggest question everybody has about hosta is which variety should be planted in the sun and which varieties are for the shade. The answer is the lighter the foliage, the brighter the sun. So you would plant golden or chartreuse hosta in full sun. 
the variegated leaved variety would go in sun or shade, and the blue leafed variety are for full shade. The most popular variety that you see are the variegated, such as Minuteman or Liberty. These can be planted anywhere and will thrive. The soil for hostas should be slightly acidic and have good drainage, but with a little care, they will mature in four to eight years and some will grow into massive plants. The best time to divide a hosta is in the spring before the leaves unfurl, but you can really divide them in any season as long as it's not really hot outside. To begin, place your shovel at the base of the plant and dig down about five inches. You want to dig around the entire perimeter of the plant, then lift it out of the garden. Hosta have very shallow roots, so it's very easy to dig. To divide the hosta, you lay it on its side and then place a garden spade in the middle of the root ball. A garden spade is different than a regular shovel. A garden spade has a flat bottom. Now you want to press down firmly on the spade with your foot and split the hosta. You can continue to split the hosta as many times as you like. You just need to make sure that each new plant has roots attached. Now you need to plant your new little hosta plants. You want to dig a hole a little larger than the actual plant. Hold the leaves up and fill the hole with soil. You want to remove any leaves that have broken off and water well. Recut the ends of any leaves that you removed and arrange them in a vase just as you would with flowers. This display will last for weeks.